all right what's up welcome back to math and beats here we are again gonna do another video on some mathematics this time we're going to introduce the topic of symbolic representations of functions so here we go we're going to start off by just refreshing our memory what's a function well a function if you recall is a relation, remember that a relation is a, any set of ordered pairs. A function is a relation in which each first coordinate has exactly one second coordinate. That's for all the ordered pairs in the, in the function. So, what we want to do is introduce the symbolic way of representing such a function. Maybe as a, another refresher, I'm just going to write down an example of a function. So, let's just pretend we had the function 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6. This is indeed a function. Every first coordinate, 1, 3, and 5, have exactly one second coordinate, respectively 2, 4, and 6. Vocabulary-wise, uh, for purposes of, as we'll see in a moment, we're going to have another way of referring to the first and second coordinates. So, another way we can refer to the first coordinate is by calling it an input second coordinate we can call it an output we'll see why in a moment so above in the function that we wrote down one three and five those are all inputs those are first coordinates and then three four and six those are the outputs so just another way of referring to the first coordinates in a function now why do we call them this? We're going to see why and how the symbolic representation of a function happens by considering the following situation. Kind of silly, but we're going to think of this diagram I'm drawing down right now. It's like a machine. So imagine this weird looking machine in which you put things into the machine. So I'm going to put stuff in putting things in we're going to put call those inputs and then something happens to the input the machine manipulates the input transforms it does something to it it applies some type of rule that's specific to the machine so put the input in and then apply some rule to the input well the machine applies some rule to the input, and then it spits out the result, which is what we call the output. <clears throat> As we can see above, um, inputs and outputs are very relevant to this conversation and to the discussion of functions. So now you might see why we consider such vocabulary words for first and second coordinates being inputs and outputs but now where's the symbolic representation come in well what are we putting into the machine some input what is it I don't know it just depends on the scenario and so I'm just gonna call the input something I'm gonna give it a placeholder traditionally we call it X so just call the input something we're gonna call it X whatever it may be and then, once we apply some rule, it transforms and changes the x into something else, depending on the rule. We usually uh, call this rule f for function. And then the result is something, which is the output, which we traditionally call the variable y. And because this output is the result of applying some rule f to the input x 
we have the notation f of x as we've just written down. So this notation over here is literally written in red f of x, that's how you say it, it is not a product. Not a product. That is, it is not f times x. Not. Not. Um, it's just symbolic representation of what's described in that little diagram there is. You take an input x, and then we apply the rule f to it. The result is something which we call f of x, which is something. It's also just something else called y. So literally, this notation, y equals f of x, that is your symbolic representation of a function. And so, we'd, we probably should look at an example of this, but hopefully this, this diagram gets across the point of what the symbolic representation is. We'll explore more in depth in, in further videos, but for now it's just kind of introducing the idea. So let's look at an example of such a thing. Um, we're just going to make something up here down below. Here's an example. Let's consider the example in which we have a function and the inputs, let's just call them x just like we did above, although you can call it whatever you want really. The input is just whole numbers. So whole numbers means positive counting numbers, sometimes called the, the natural numbers, just 1, 2, 3, 4, and, and so on and so on. 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Those are the inputs we're going to put into our machine. And then the rule, the rule here, RF, is take the input and square it. So we're going to multiply the input by itself. Then add to this the square root of the input. And now once we apply f, this rule, to the input x, will result in the output, which is f of x. So you say, okay, well, well how do we write this symbolically? The input, again, being x, there's x, there's x. What are we doing to these x's? Well, our output here, output, going to be the thing we're going to call the rule f applied to x. And that is we're going to take the input x and we're going to square it. Then we're going to add to that the square root of that same input x. And so there is the symbolic way of representing this scenario, this, this function, in which we take the input and square it, and then we add to it the square root of the input x. So we can evaluate a few of these things. Um, just pick a different color here. So for instance, what if x is 1? Then we're going to get that f of 1, notice how I've written this. If we specify the input value, which we are here, the input in general, x being any positive whole number, now I would like to know what the output is when the input actually is x is 1. So I just replace every x I see with 1, both in the function notation f of 1 and in evaluating it through its rule. So x squared, I'm going to square the 1 and then add to that the square root of that same 1. Every x I see gets replaced with the numerical value when we're evaluating it somewhere specifically. Of course, 1 squared is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. 
1 plus 1 is 2. So over here on the right, we'll just kind of keep track the ordered pairs that are the result of the specified inputs. The first one here being, well, the input is 1, the output is 2. We can evaluate another one. Maybe what if x is 4? Then I'm going to evaluate the output of the input of 4 applying the function rule of f. What do I do? I take the 4, I square it, I add to it the square root of 4. 4 squared is 16, and square root of 4 is 2. The result is 16 plus 2, which is 18. We get the ordered pair 4, comma, 18. Maybe one more just for fun. If x is 9, we'll evaluate this function at the input value of 9. I get the 9, I square it, and I add to it the square root of the 9. 9 squared is 81. Square root of 9 is 3. 81 plus 3 is 84. And hence the result of putting in the input of 9 into this function has the output of 84 get the order pair 984 and you know we could pick any positive whole number we want and plug it in um, notice that I picked nice perfect squares because of the square root appearing in the rule but you could pick any uh, whole number here since that's what we specify to be the, the input values and, um, and there you go and there's a an example of a symbolic representation of a function and also evaluating it. So in the end, just a quick refresher, what we've been doing, function is a relation in which each first coordinate has exactly one second coordinate. We gave an example of this. A new name for first coordinates are inputs and second coordinates being outputs as displayed in the diagram we drew where we thought of a function in the way of being some type of machine we put in the input call it x we apply some rule to the input call it f and out spits out the output which is something we call y which is also represented by the symbolic representation of the function f apply to the input of x in our example we just looked at we saw that if we just for the fun of it picked input values being positive whole numbers and the rule applied to the input is you take the input let's call it x and square it and then add to it the square root of that same input we get the rule x squared plus square root of x is our rule f of x we evaluated some of these values uh, various values of the input and we got the corresponding output so that is your symbolic representation of a function introduction and we'll have more of this in more in, in upcoming videos so that's about it hopefully you learned something hopefully it was all is all good and uh i'm out so time to listen to a beat peace <laughs>